All right, friends. So some of you, if you've been with us, this will look familiar to you. For our newbies, again, welcome in. We've created a, a home-based um, Google document for you, and it's comprehensive. It has all five webinars and information for all five webinars, but um, we'll have um, everything from the links to the resources, some, some extra optional resources for you. We've also provided a created a note taking guide. Again, these are just options. You don't have to do nothing to be turned in for homework, but just something to assist in your processing. I know some of you probably will do that already doodle and, and do all your graphic organizing, but here's another tool. And then just a heads up, just like in previous sessions, we will use a discussion board, one, you know, some way to kind of capture um, your thinking and our thinking together collectively uh, during this hour. And we've differentiated them between grade levels. Feel free to peruse one grade level or the other. Feel free to just focus on the one that is your day-to-day -day role, um, but just know the discussion boards will be there. So before we move on, we wanted to highlight one piece, right? This being, this is session five of seven. In the previous five sessions, we've asked for your feedback. And the feedback has fallen in three categories. We've asked you, what do you find useful, right? That is in alignment. If you look at those stones, things are aligned. They're building on top of each other. What have you found challenging about the last couple of webinars and what might we consider in future planning. And so we wanted to give you a quick glimpse without taking too much time into your feedback. So a keeper, a thing that felt was useful were the discussion boards. And so this quote where a teacher sharing how she came to or he came to an aha um, during the discussion board said to us, okay, this is valuable, even though we know it's webinar um, and it's almost hitting it on the nose about how to support hybrid instruction, but we thought, okay, got it. Um, this teacher said, I, I, uh, don't worry about it, um, at least just keep it there, but um, just saying, I came to an aha through the discussion board. The second piece was, okay, how might we make it more useful is, okay, we know it's a discussion board we get to share, but how might I get a little bit more instruction before we have to share out? Because our, pro our process has been we have a problem of practice and then we go to the discussion board and we share out some ideas and so some of the feedback we got is like hey can we talk a little bit more can we get some more instruction before going to the discussion board so that i feel like i am equipped to contribute to the conversation and so again friends we're keeping that in mind and then lastly you thought as amazing um, expert readers, as you'll notice, we'll highlight here in just a second, you said, how might we tell other people that we like their ideas? Or how might we ask them um, about, and how might we build on their ideas and link to their ideas? And so when you go to the discussion board, we'll remind you that there's a couple of ways to do that. And again, we know we're all limited in this webinar series approach, but um, know that feel free to add a plus one next to an idea that you agree and a question mark if you want to inquire more about that. So let's say I had written something like interrupted thinking is the, 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 um, the strategy and the, uh, uh, Elise was like, I, I want more about that. Feel free to put a little question mark and it would trigger me to know, oh, somebody is asking more about this. So again, we will continue. We will keep the discussion boards and we will include some strategies and links. So we'll front load a little bit. There'll be some text in the discussion boards already. Again, providing some options, feel free to dig into them or not. Just if you're ready to jump off and, and, and dive into the discussion board without too much front loading, no worries. We're good. We're just trying to provide as many options as possible. Friends, another piece of the context building for today is the idea that we know that all of you are in different places and we'll get to what that might look like here in just a second, but feel free to um, think about today's session together. It might be that you're in a reflective space, like, okay, Elisa and Elise, I, I've been chewing on this in my system, we're already transitioning to things, I'm here in a reflective space, feel free to do that. Some of you might be in an extending space, like I'm already doing so much of this, this is an, like an affirmation as a result of our time together, I've been affirmed, and I'm going to take it up a notch and or connections. It could be that you're in a space of like, oh, this reminds me of, or another thing we're doing in our system that we can build coherence around might be. So we invite you, we know context is king, right? Context is king for reading, context is king for implementation of, of uh, approaches. And so we, we trust and know that you will um, make it meaningful for, for what your needs are in your context. All right, my friends, so we're going to try this strategy called the waterfall. I've been calling it raindrops and all sorts of other watery things, but we were intrigued to find out what model is your school employing right now. So, for example, uh, so let me explain the waterfall and then I'll show you the, the, um, 
the, the images. So the waterfall uh, strategy is that you will choose an option, it will be A, B, or C, and then you will put it in the chat, but not press enter just yet. You will just hold off. And then when I say go, we'll click go and it, sh it should emulate a waterfall, okay? But again, if you press enter too quickly because you're a fast typer, like I'm a talker, no worries. There's no <laughs> punitive here, nothing bad, but let's just give it a shot so I can get a quick glance to see what our models. So A, is your system, are you 100% aligned? You would be typing in the letter A. B, is your system 100% in person with obvious modifications? We know that every, every different county is doing things differently. Or you see like my poor hubby, <laughs> even though he's excited about it, but he's a PE teacher friends and he's doing PE like with his kids and also via Zoom. So he walks around with his phone. So are you A, 100% aligned, B, with 100% kiddos in front of you, or C, doing the both. Um, so you can choose A, B, or C, ready, and go. Wow, a lot of, a lot of support from my husband. Okay, a lot of Cs. All right, you got it. All right, thank you so much. So we'll be thinking about that as we talk about how we adapt to these. The majority of you are living in that in-between world. And so we'll be cognizant of that as, as we move forward. All right, thank you, Elise, go for it. Thank you, Elisa. Um, before I talk about today's goals, I just wanted to recognize our colleagues who are helping in the background, Becky Canham and um, Shamron Coyle, they presented the last webinar. And so today they're um, providing back channel support. And so anytime we uh, reference a document or a link, they'll be posting those in the chat um, for your convenience. So let's talk about our goals today. Um, the focus of this webinar is building comprehension in, um, with rigorous text in a hybrid environment. So we want you to be able to strengthen your capacity for supporting comprehension of rigorous text um, by focusing on three areas. We needed to narrow it down for the purpose of a one hour webinar. So we'll be talking today about making connections. And these are things, things that your students will be doing, asking questions and monitoring progress. Um, we also want you to explore design considerations for um, complex hybrid learning environments in particular. <clears throat> And then before we start um, um, on our presentation, we thought it would be good to have a common definition of reading comprehension. I know each of you probably has your own definition. We took the definition from the ELA ELD framework, which um, is published by the California Department of Ed. And so we are hoping this could also serve as our, our working definition for today's webinar. So the framework states, um, that reading comprehension is a process of extracting and constructing meaning through interaction and involvement with written language. And the framework, when they talk about reading comprehension, they also talk about meaning making or making meaning. So I'm just going to give you a few seconds to read and process that quote on your own before moving on. Okay, so those three strategies I said that we were going to focus on come from comes from research, cognitive research about what expert readers do while they're reading. And uh, they identify through this research seven strategies, including connecting, questioning, predicting, inferencing, visualizing, monitoring comprehension and reflecting. Uh, we will, in, in some sense, talk about all of them, but we're really going to focus on the three that we mentioned on our goal slide a couple slides previous, and those are, again, connecting, questioning, and monitoring comprehension. Um, there is a link to the article if you wanted to read a little bit more about that research, but it really just talks about how um, we understand reading comprehension as shifting from a set of skills such as decoding and fluency to really um, encompassing abilities and skills and cognitive processes. Um, and a little bit more about this, this research. How did they know that readers were connecting and monitoring comprehension? Well, they, they took a sampling of readers and they had them 
read text, but also share their thinking out loud. So this is one of those metacognitive processes that good readers engage in is um, they, they, they think about their reading. And so having those uh, readers think aloud made those strategies visible. So all those strategies that we think about as internal were made apparent through these think alouds. Well, think alouds themselves are a strategy you can use to employ to support readers um, in the development of their own reading abilities. And if you click this link here, it actually takes you to some protocols uh, for teaching these metacognitive strategies explicitly. So things like how do you monitor your own comprehension? How do you use questioning during your reading? How do you connect to text? Um, these the link goes to protocols that tell teachers exactly how to model and teach these strategies explicitly. Um, these are very self-explanatory, so we're not going to spend a whole lot of time um, talking about it, but you do have the resources there if you were to um, want to teach any of these strategies explicitly to your students. Um, I'm just going to talk a little bit about think alouds. Um, this is one strategy that is adapted from um, an educator and the link to the source is at the bottom of the slide. But when you're thinking aloud, it's really important to do the work ahead of time of anticipating possible barriers that your students might face. So if you can anticipate the speed bumps or the stopping points that might lead to stumbling blocks or even lead to deeper comprehension, you're going to be um, preparing to address those as you think aloud. Um, and this helps you narrow down the stopping points to um, those um, points in the reading that are really gonna be kind of the um, crossroads for your students. The other thing you can do as a teacher for Think Alouds is actually write the scripts on sticky notes and place them in the text. Um, thinking Aloud might not come naturally um, to have to pause and explain your thinking, but there are things that you can do to, to make it apparent. So anticipate barriers and then write your script. So let's, that takes us to our first problem of practice. So remember we said we're gonna focus on connecting questioning and monitoring comprehension. Well, the first problem of practice in this hybrid environment is, is this, learners struggle to make meaningful connections to text. So this was, this was a problem before pandemic, um, getting students engaged, getting them to um, see the relevance of what they were studying or reading. Um, but this one teacher says before the pandemic, she was able to provide opportunities for her students to connect with text, but it was easier for her to offer choices and there were more opportunities to engage with text together. So there are things that were communicated in person, body language, facial expressions. Um, so students could pick up on your enthusiasm, but she asks now, how can I better support my students to make meaningful connections while reading in a hybrid setting? So there are some things that um, are unchanged, whether you're in person or in a uh, remote hybrid setting, but some things that are exacerbated are lack of physical connection, physical closeness when engaging with text, um, limited access to text, choice, diverse titles, titles of interest, and less time focused on reading as a class because of the schedule or because of all the things you have to prioritize in shorter blocks of learning. So let's look at a couple things you can do to engage readers in a hybrid or um, in-person environment. Um, so when students make connections, what they're doing is they're drawing on their experiences and background knowledge to connect with text as they read. And um, they'll either, either connect the text to themselves and their personal experiences. They might connect the text to something else they've read previously or they may connect text to something that's going on the, in the world or is important in their world. So when we talk about uh, making, supporting making connections, we're really talking about ways in which educators can design learning experiences to support making those connections. And we've listed several here. So um, including uh, providing access to inclusive and diverse texts. So we know that when students see themselves in text, it's easier for them to make a connection, um, especially the, the older they are. 
um, providing choice, um, providing text and media in combination, setting goals, and um, encouraging discussion. So um, I'm just going to take you to one link here. One thing that I would like you to um, consider is the use of book trailers. So this is a website that has a number of book trailers and book trailers are, are exactly what they sound like. They're movie trailers, except they're for books. Um, and they're starting to be very widely used because we have a very media savvy, media hungry um, generation of students. Um, they learn so much. They learn through TikTok, they learn through, you know, it used to be that we learn through TV. Um, there are so many platforms now that they learn through. So book trailers are an engaging way of hooking readers. And if you notice in a lot of your adoptions in schools, a lot of the hooks or engagement or activating strategies involve a video or short video, uh, short clip to, um, to engage learners. So let me just play this clip here for you. My name is Joseph Fernando, and I am a Jew. The Nazis have ordered my family to leave Germany. We have a few days to get out or we will be sent to a concentration camp. We are going to meet my father in Hamburg and board a ship to Cuba. Cuba isn't safe anymore, Isabel, my father tells me. There are riots throughout Havana. People are starving. In order to survive, we must reach America. We leave tonight and nothing, nothing is left after an airstrike destroys our apartment in Aleppo. Everything we own is in these backpacks. We're trying to reach the border of Turkey, and from there find a smuggler who can get us into Greece. Once we're there, we can be granted refugee status. If we make it, we'll be safe. If we make it, we'll have a new life. And freedom. Look for refugee at your Scholastic Book Fair. So thank you for your that. Um, and at this time, what I'd like to do is give you an opportunity to either discuss that book trailer or the advantages of using book trailers to engage students um, or extend on that or connect it to your own strategies in a hybrid environment that you use to engage readers. Um, it's very difficult um, because sometimes they're not even on screen, so you don't know if they're engaged. Um, and, and it's a completely different learning environment. So on this next slide, we're gonna have links to all these discussion boards, and you will see the link to the book trailer um, on the discussion board. But so feel free to comment on that, or again, to um, type in your own resources. So problem of practice number one, um, you're gonna limit your um, comments to this one section here. Um, and answer this question, how do you design to help learners make connections in their reading comprehension? And on this next slide, you will see the links to the discussion boards that Becky and Shamron are gonna go ahead and paste into the chat. And they're divided by grade span. So there's preschool through second grade, third through fifth grade, sixth through eighth, ninth through 12th and post-secondary. So please choose the um, board that most aligns with uh, your, your audience. And uh, we're gonna give you about five minutes to go ahead and populate that board. Starting now, thank you. Hi everybody. We also wanna make a note that we do have um, live captioning available. You can access it at the bottom um, by clicking on your live transcript and the CC button, thank you.
Okay, please wrap up your final thoughts in the next 30 seconds, and then we're going to have Elisa pick up on problem of practice number two. Thank you, Elise. I see a lot of plus ones in certain boards and ideas about how the child's background impacts, right? How they might engage with the book, everything from language to culture to student voice. Um, appreciate that so much, friends. All right, so the second challenge for us today is, is common. Again, um, pre-COVID, post-COVID, I have a feeling it'll still linger, right? Learners struggle to engage in questioning strategies that deepening their reading, question, comprehension of rigorous texts. So this expert teacher posed this question. Prior to the pandemic, I was better able to provide students many options for engaging in questioning strategies such as quench systems and KWL charts and work group, excuse me, group, group work and discussions. In the hybrid setting, I find it difficult to engage my students in employing questioning strategies as my classroom now has students in person and virtual. How might I employ questioning strategies that lead to deeper reading comprehension in a complex hybrid setting, right? It's even more complicated. So some of the, uh, uh, going back to what questioning is, like getting a, a calibrated definition of what that is. Uh, remember friends that the idea behind questioning is that it becomes an active experience, right? Expert readers approach reading as an active experience and as a way of engaging and almost challenging the text, right? We know the secondary colleagues out there, you know, uh, the children feel like they're always combating the author or the perspective. But then we also know that it can result in increase in reading comprehension. So what are some like, oh, you know, this is not an exhausted list, but some ideas and some things to consider. And then I will share with you a couple of concrete strategies. Creating safe spaces. Now more than ever, we know SEL is so huge and it's definitely a thing we can live without no longer, right? So creating a safe space, either virtually or in person, where the children know that questioning is being fostered. And then what might that mean, depending on my grade level, depending on my context? Um, think alouds. Um, providing a space for that to happen, and also am I modeling it for the students? Embedded reminders. This one feels small, but is so big, right? When they were in person, you probably had um, things on your board or uh, like bookmarks reminding the kiddos to reflect on questions before, during, and after the reading. But thinking about that in the hybrid setting is obviously very crucial. And then also thinking routines. Um, I'm going to walk you through um, a couple of examples um, very quickly. One that I want you to think about, if I have a blank page, okay, Lisa, I have a blank page, the kiddos have a blank page either at home or via Zoom, what might I do? The second option is going to be, okay, what about something else? Because we know that text is not just words, right? We know math has text. We know art has text. Music has text. What might I do? And then we'll dive in a little bit deeper in one strategy that's called interrupted thinking. So the question starts on the left hand side of your screen is you start with a blank page so you let the kiddos brainstorm questions and then you drill down and you help them choose questions that you can um, decide to do an activity with put them in groups but it's very interesting as a teacher to see where is their mind as you let them brainstorm on a blank page beginning middle and end so let's say you have an image in front of you and you pose the question what um, if the artwork was at the beginning of the story what might happen next if the artwork's in the middle of the story, what would happen before and what might happen after? And if the artwork's at the end of the story. But again, I challenge us to think about not just text with words and images that are embedded in a story, knowing that even word problems in mathematics, right? And the language around the word problems is also text. And so prompting those type of questions. But let's dive it deeper into a little bit into this next strategy called interrupted reading. And friends, when I was looking through, we were, the team was looking through strategies, we thought, which are the ones that are high leverage for our colleagues? Which are the ones that are most adaptable to other content areas that are across the board and more malleable? We know some of you are in Zoom land, some of you are in Google Suite, some of you, we know that you will adapt accordingly, but here's three robust strategies around um, questioning. So interrupted reading means exactly that. You're going to choose a chunk of test check, excuse me, say that three times fast, choose a text and you're going to chunk it into four to five manageable sections. 
The next piece will be to read each chunk out loud. The next piece will be to after each chunk you have the kiddos um, uh, brainstorm, write questions about the text. And then three will be that before you go on to um, the next chunk, have the students share out their questions with whole group and you, they're encouraged to respond to each other's questions. So think about the power, and I'm sure you're thinking about timing and what structure might it look like. Is this a, is this a uh, jam board? Is this a breakout room? Is this the kids in front of me do it this way and the kids online? I know your, your, brain, your brain is probably thinking of all the different ways to structure it, but the idea is that the kiddos, you're taking this thing that looks so intimidating at times, right? Breaking it down into chunks, doing the process of reading or listening to it out loud, and then having the kids generate questions. Elise, go ahead. Oh, thanks. Um, I was just thinking about, um, you know, experiences I've had where I had students generate questions and sometimes they have trouble generating questions mm -hmm. or they do generate questions. It's, I was in a Socratic seminar once with students and one question said, what if the ending was changed? And then every question after that started with, what if this, what if that? Yeah, yeah, yeah link here where it says write questions. There are three documents with question stems that encourage higher order thinking. So how can we get our students to ask questions that are more, um, how is this different than, how is X different than Y? Um, so those question stems um, can support students in asking more complex questions that would lead to more complex discussion. Fantastic. Thank you for that resource, Elise. Appreciate it. And then the last part, friends, was the part about they're not going to just be talking about questions and talking back and forth just on the chunks. The goal will be to the big picture, right? Back to the whole text and, and using their responses to engage with that. But anyway, yes, let's dive into the next part. So we because we want your thoughts and the link to the interrupted thinking uh, uh, reading strategy is already on your on your discussion board. So again, friends, Dive into that one to see what resources are there and or reflect, extend, and connect and share your ideas. Uh, we will give you again five minutes to do so. And I think that, yeah, yeah, the Becky already put the dis discussion boards on the link. So I will pause for now. Um, and, um, and thank you so much, Elisa, for talking about um, interrupted reading. Um, I talked to my own daughter about what helps her in her classes when she's having to read a complex text. And she talked about how teachers stopping and asking questions at key points was really um, instrumental in her own understanding. So um, if she can, she doesn't have those skills internalized to have a teacher guide her in, in chunking, stopping, reflecting uh, was really helpful. That's Becky, great. thank you. They'll probably, uh, well, they already have posted those links again, and you're going to go to problem of practice number two this time, and you have another five minutes.
Go ahead and wrap up your thought in the next 30 seconds, and then we'll go on to our final problem of practice. Okay, before we go on to problem of practice number three, Becky or uh, Shamlin, did you um, want to share anything that you saw on the discussion boards that might resonate with uh, the rest of the group? Sure. Um, as I was reading through, um, I saw a lot of kind of even similarities across all of the different um, grade level span discussion boards. Saw a lot of um, ideas of scaffolding, starting really with the teacher modeling, thinking aloud, and then um, providing different supports so that students really internalize the questioning strategy. So some um, participants were talking about the idea of starting with question stems um, to get students to be able to formulate their own questions, um, pre-populating texts at certain stopping points so students can um, write their own questions there. Um, the idea of thinking like an expert or thinking like a critic. So giving the learners a lens as they're reading to, um, to develop questions around that lens. Thank you, Becky. I love that one too. I think someone had said, when formulating questions, think like a novice. What would someone ask who was a novice in this particular topic? And then taking that a step further and involving the students in perspective taking. So if, if they're not an office, what would they, like you said, say if they were an expert or a critic um, and taking different points of view to uh, views to frame their questions. Um, any Cameron or Elisa, did you have anything else to add before we move on? Really quickly, friends, I love the idea of using Google Slides, and I know this is, you would use your judgment about your appropriateness, but have a group's working on Google Slide, where in each group is only working on their slide to create a visual of their section. I thought that was an interesting and amazing um, option um, for helping our students with questioning. Yeah, and, and offering some choice or alternative uh, means of expression. Um, so thanks for that, Elisa. Let's go on to the final problem of practice. And this is uh, one that involves monitoring um, or having readers monitor their own comprehension. So learners are required to be much more independent during asynchronous learning, but they may not yet have the metacognitive skills to monitor their own comprehension and make adjustments during reading. And I know some of you who are teaching um, elementary or even the primary grades they might not be even able to sit still or attend. So there are lots of challenges. Um, and we hope that they're, they're starting on, you know, monitoring their own comprehension. Um, one teacher describes it as without being able to look over a student's shoulder to check their work or listen in on discussions, um, she says, I'm finding it difficult to tell whether my students are understanding complex texts. How can I make their reading comprehension more visible? So that's important in two ways. Um, it needs to be visible to the teacher so that she can engage in formative assessment and evaluate how she might change her practice to re be responsive to her students um, and also to provide feedback to her students. Um, but it also needs to be visible because students need to be able to uh, describe what it is that they're doing during their reading or so they can build their own awareness or their own metacognitive skills. So one way that we can support that process uh, that students engage in, um, where they determine whether they understand what they're reading and take steps to remedy their comprehension is to again, look at design. Um, you probably have had your own experiences with monitoring comprehension, whether you're taking a graduate course or you're reading state policy, you may have found that you've read something seven times without absorbing any meaning from it. And um, as expert readers, we know to stop, we know to reread, uh, we know to uh, draw on other resources like uh, references. Um, I was reading a Dan Brown novel and I could not get past the first page because there were so many allusions to uh, cultural allusions that I had to look up. Um, so we know how to do that as expert readers, but what can we do to build this, these skills in our students? 
Educators can design learning experiences to make student thinking visible as they develop uh, magnet, met, metacognitive strategies. So things that we want our students to engage in are goal setting, and you're probably already doing that with close reading, right? You're setting a purpose for reading. Um, and goal setting is very important. Um, it, I know it's been a while since we've been in classrooms, but think about that student who, before the, the second bell rings, comes up and says, what are we doing today? Um, that student usually will say, oh, I'll tell you in a second, or oh, I need to tell everybody. Um, hopefully, um, though you engage that student, you might say, gosh, that's a, a really great question. I'm glad you want to know. Uh, because that student shows that they're curious about what they're going to learn, and they're hoping to frame it before class starts. So we can help our students with that. And uh, we want them to be actively engaged in some kind of task so that um, some of these internal processes become external. And when we think of monitoring comprehension, we think of it as an individual activity, but it doesn't have to be an individual independent activity. We know that students can co-construct meaning. And if there are any Vygotsky fans out there, um, you know that that can be a, a very powerful process to construct meaning with another person or through interaction. And then we want students to document their thinking so that we as teachers have something to evaluate or we have a, a way of seeing their thinking um, on paper, whether it's in text or pictures or annotations. I'm going to show you one strategy. It's from the ELA ELD framework, and it really lends itself to um, this process here. So what you see in front of you is an article. So you may be asking your students to read an article in class. Um, this strategy is called the five word summary. And I'm going to briefly describe it, but just know that it's linked here on the slide. And if you wanted step by step details on how to do this activity, it's right there for you. Um, but in this activity, what you would have is um, students read these articles independently, and each student would highlight just five words. What are the most five important words um, from this text that support the main idea? Um, and each student um, will have their own set of five words. So you're going to have each student, um, as an example here, write down five words from the reading that they identified. The next step in five word summary, and I want you to think about all the skills that are involved in this activity, is they would have to pair up with another student, compare their list of five words, uh, negotiate a new list, and then come up with a list between the two of them with their uh, five words, uh, their synthesized list of five words. And then following their work in pairs, they could join another pair, so they're a group of four. They would take their synthesized list from one pair and their synthesized list from another pair, and then again um, negotiate uh, until they came up with one synthesized list between the four of them. And then the final step with this five word summary is um, independently, they would take the five words and then write a summary. So I'm just going to take a step back and ask you, if you could find these strategies within that assignment I just described. Was there goal setting involved? Was there active engagement? Were, were there opportunities to co-construct meaning? And were there opportunities to document their thinking? And again, we're going to go ahead and give you five minutes to either reflect on, extend, or connect to the strategies presented, and then share your own ideas or comments on those discussion boards for monitoring comprehension. Um, those links again are in the chat and we will give you another five minutes and then we'll come together and wrap up our session today.
There are lots of good ideas and comments in the discussion boards. Um, please take the next 30 seconds to wrap up your final thoughts, and then we'll go ahead and wrap up our hour together here. Okay, so we've got about five minutes left. Um, we wanted to end with this quote. Um, I'll go ahead and read it out loud. If you wanna mute me so that you can read it to yourself, please feel free to do so. Um, I know that I comprehend better when I just read something to myself. Um, literacy is a bridge from misery to hope. It is a tool for daily life in modern society. It is a bulwark against poverty and a building block of development. Literacy is a platform for democratization. Literacy is finally the road to human progress and the means through which every man, woman, and child can realize his or her full potential. And so it's been an honor to be able to support um, all of you who have attended in literacy development across the content areas. And I hope that you were able to, um, you're able to walk away today with some strategies that you can implement tomorrow. Um, if you need any assistance, you can reach out and contact us and uh, please review all the links and materials that we've shared with you in the home based document. Um, Elise, there, we have the link for the registration for session six without presumptuous <laughs> and then the survey feedback friends that will help us uh, in as we build the next session. I think it's the next couple slides. Friend. Oh, great. Yeah. Um, so register for session six, we'll post that in the chat. That's gonna be May 10th and it's gonna be on expression and communication. And then if you could be so kind as to fill out our uh, feedback survey so that again, we can take your feedback and make our um, presentations better and responsive to your needs. Um, with that, thank you again for coming. And I do wanna give a shout out to whoever wrote in the discussion boards that they're gonna have their students do and create book trailers. Um, so thank you for that. And thank you for sharing all these wonderful ideas with your colleagues. Alisa, do you have any closing comments before we say goodbye? No, thank you so much, friends. The next slide I think has all our information in case you guys need to connect with us. Uh, the slide deck and everything else uh, would be happy to connect. Thank you so much, friends. Have a great evening.